everybody today. I'm actually uh, brewing up my uh, blonde bombshell once again. It was such a hit. Uh, but uh, so anyway, I hope everybody had a nice Christmas um, and, a, and a happy new year coming up. Uh, by the time I post this, it'll almost be New Year's. 2016 but I wanted to show a you know my brewing name my brewing uh, name my the name of my brewery is easy day brewing and my wife uh, made me this for Christmas which is really nice a little plaque so I'll put it up there with the uh, the other ones that I have and I thought that was really nice first made out of metal but uh, you know how everybody has their kind of their brewer name like the, the, the name of their brewery like uh, like uh, Lamro 22's is Black Dog Saloon and SJ Pours is Little Face Brewing and uh, you know other other people have uh, the, the name of their brewery well mine is Easy Day and that's my logo so uh, I thought that was a nice gift but uh, but anyway so uh, like I said I'm, I'm, I'm brewing up the Blonde Bombshell again and uh, it's kind of nice to, to brew something you've already done and, and, and just look at your notes and brew it and it's uh, like you don't have to think about it so much. But anyway, so, uh, so I'll keep you up to date. Hang in there. She was taking the first runnings off this uh, mash here. But I wanted to mention something to you um, about these, uh, these mash tons that are made of coolers. They're made from coolers for a reason. And um, I used to use just a rectangular cooler that had a, a lid that just kind of set down on top. And uh, I did my mash that way, but the temperature wouldn't hold that well with that. But <clears throat> with, uh, with a mash tun like this one, this is an igloo, um, it, has a, it has a lid that's very, very tight. And watch this, this is very hard to get off of it actually. It has a lot of... Uh, it has a lot of uh, pressure inside. Once you push that lid down, it it it, it, it makes a, it, it makes a lot of pressure inside this uh, mash tun, which I believe holds the temperature uh, more steady. Uh, not only because the lid is tight, but also because you have the pressure inside. Uh, imagine it this way: if you if you could look at this mash tun as a, a big plus sign right here uh, for pressure. And if you can imagine um, any of that um, hot, hot air trying to escape, or any of that steam or anything trying to escape, it would be impossible because the the pressure is so high in there, um, and it's just it's it's coming down on on the everything that's inside that um, that uh, mash tun. Hopefully, uh, that made sense. <laughs> but to me, that's the way to go. You want to find if you if you if you have a mash tun if you want to get a, a cooler that, that has a, a really good uh, a really good lid it's going to keep your temperatures rock solid which this one does you need a lid that's going to that's going to not only be tight but also hold the pressure inside uh, the mash tun. Like 1.42. <clears throat> well, it seems like everything went very well today. Um, I hit the original gravity. Uh, I was looking for 1.040. Looked like it was probably more closer to a 1.042, which is okay. The volume looked the same. It looked right at 5.5. And it was about 70 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. Uh, so it looks like everything went really well. Um, I can't think of anything that, um, you know, I hit my, you know, my hop additions, everything went well, right on the mark. So, uh, and also it's, it's a little easier once you develop a recipe uh, and you brew it for the second time looking at your notes it makes it so much easier so uh, so keep really good notes out there also this one is one of those that I shared with a lot of my friends and I think everyone I shared this beer the the um, 
the blonde bombshell is what I call it. Um, everyone really liked it. It's very, very close to a lager. Like I said, it's very close to a Stella, but it has a little bit more personality to it than Stella. Uh, but uh, nice and clean and everything. But uh, we'll see what see what's happening uh, with it on the taste. So stay tuned for the taste. Uh, I'll be right back in a minute. So there it is, the Blonde Bombshell, the second time, second time around. Smelling really clean, very white, creamy head there. And uh, bubbles are kind of large, actually. I think if it had more malt in it, it would probably be a little tighter. The head doesn't stay around too long, but it's, uh, it's just got a little bit of, uh, you know, it's got the, the pil six pounds of Pilsner. Uh, two pounds, two row, half pound carapils, and Hallatower Mittel Fruit at, at uh, what is it, uh, 60 and 20 minutes. Ended up with, uh, what was the IBUs on this, like 25, and the, uh, alcohol, alcohol by volume ended up being 4.2. Nice, nice sessionable beer. Very drinkable. Uh, very, you know, when you get one of the, I don't know if I've said this before, but when you get one of those um, lagers, similar to a lager, but you know, you get one of those lagers and you have a drink, you have another drink, you say, there's just something missing there. You know, you make a lot of ales, if you do like I do, and you drink a lager and you see, ah, it's, just, it's just not an ale. This is like a lager that has the identity of an ale. <laughs> If that makes any sense at all, but it it has that little more that that flavor that you want that just a little bit more flavor, but it it does have a lager identity to it, not a whole lot of carbonation. I put this on uh, I put this in a keg. This is out of a keg, but I put this at uh, what is it? Thirty psi for like two days, and then uh, I ramp it down, serve it at about twelve psi. And that's what you get right there. But uh, real simple, very simple beer, um, very tasty. The consummate uh, summer beer. Going in once more. Very drinkable in that it goes down easy. It's light, it's refreshing, but also because I like I like keeping the grain bill light because it, it makes it that it gives it just that sessionable quality where you could drink two or three of these uh, and you're fine, you know, because you're not having that big alcohol hit. Very good. Very, very slight on the hop aroma, maybe a little bit of hop aroma there, but definitely not. Definitely not too much hop, maybe just a t touch of the bitterness, because it's not sweet. It's probably middle of the road, but uh, very clean, but um, just enough hop in there to tell you that, uh, that, it, that it's got a little bit of hop bitterness, but, but really nice, very, very nice. I'm going to have to make this again in the summer, but anyway. Just thought I'd show you at the end uh, what it looked like, what it tasted like, and uh, cheers everybody, and I'll see you on the next brewing video.